Hello and welcome to this open SAP course, Semantic Notation. Is this the next big thing in business intelligence? My name is Rolf Hichert. I am president of an association called IBCS, International Business Communication Standards. And together with my partner Jürgen Feist, I will try to show you our understanding of a semantic meaning in business communication, which is new. We will break it down into 10 units, and I will start with a little introduction about what we see today when we look at these presentations, PowerPoints, dashboards. When you look at Google pic picture search and ask for good PowerPoints. You find this overview. Colorful, very fancy, driven by corporate design ideas and the ideas of developers and software programmers and maybe controllers and reporting guys. It's no concept to be seen. It's just a visual fantasy of colors and designs. Looking at dashboards, we have here a sales dashboard with these little tiles, which is very fashionable at the time being, white background, and another sales dashboard of another company might look like this here. Dark background, other colors, fancy speedometers, other gadgets in visual design. And when we look again to picture search in, in Google, and ask for excellent dashboards in business intelligence, you get this overview. There's no clue, no idea of a uniform visualization at all. The nice little pie charts, little columns, bars, charts, visuals, no concept at all. Differently, the mu musicians. Hundreds of years ago, when you look for sheet music, you find this. Hundreds of years ago, the musician have decided and developed and used a language for their content, for the music. And this is what we are looking for. We need something similar, a communication language for financial data, for business data, and this is the objective of our course, and we'd like to convince you that this is very helpful. We will break it down into 10 units, the first week, we will cover the different aspects of meaning, measures, notation concepts, and the pros and cons and the benefits of it. And the next week, we'll be touch other chapters of business communications, such as clear message, well-structured storylines, and stuff like this. I would like to start with the first unit, which looks at semantic notation concepts in other disciplines. The other disciplines are electricity, architecture, music, and so forth. When we look at this picture, most of you will see, well, this is a no entry sign. And when we look at the list of signs in this country, it looks almost the same as in any other European country, mainly, it is Kuwait. It's, it's more or less the same standard worldwide for traffic signs. And we, have to, we had to learn these traffic signs when we wanted to pass our, and get our driver's license. Look at this sign, a, a capacitor. Every electrician worldwide will know how a lamp, a resistant, a, a capacitor, or something like this would have to be designed. And this little circuit is very clear. It's very easy to communicate worldwide. And even more complex plans, they could be much more complex than this one, will be easily understood by anyone who is trained in this topic. Again, coming back to music. They're a very good example. Look at this one. This one bar of a concerto, 
and on two pages you might have 30 or 40 times as much which represents this music. Sheet music is an excellent example for a good notation with semantic layers. Next one uh, we'd like to look at is dimensioning in engineering. Architects, engineers have to dimension their gearboxes and their houses. And they have a language worldwide too, where houses like this can easily, and the drawings can easily be under, understood by anyone in, in, in architecture design, or these details. And so what do we have? We have rules like IFRS for the contents, we have XBRL for interfaces, but we have nothing for the visual design yet, and this is what we're looking at. We would like to have something like here. A notation for scenarios like here, so that we say, okay, black is actual in the middle. Outline means this is plan, not yet there. And the light gray might mean previous year. But when we look at the situation today in annual reports and PowerPoint presentations, we find pictures like this. Some are funny, fancy, it's uh, these speedometers and dashboards, it is pie charts which are not always very helpful in even four or six or eight pie charts on a page. These triangles with a very creative form of visualization, look at the time uh, going up from 2009 to 2011 in this direction. And these figures representing a growth of 14%. But when you look at the volume of these figures, it is much more than 14%. It's not showing the proper development of these data. Then there's a question in line charts, where do we start at 100 or at 0? Do we truncate access, don't we truncate access in this index chart here? I do not really want to go into the technical details of these charts. We'll cover this later. I just want to show you about the wide variety of different visuals for similar content. Here again we have cut access for the cost income ratio. Here we have, let's say, charts from an, an annual report where the operating profit looks exactly the same as the operating margin with completely different scales. So what I would like to come to at the end of this little intro is that we need a language like the others. That means like we say actual is dark, solid, and plan is outline. And forecast is hatched somehow in between. We do not use colors for this because we need colors for other applications, for other forms of meaning. So this was the first unit of our course and I hope I could give you a little intro of what we are looking at. And I, I, I thank you for being with us and we will go on in the next unit with the top semantic rules we need in order to communicate our content. Thank you.